Hi, my name is Melissa Hagerstrom. I'm the Associate Director for Undergraduate Recruitment for the Bouvet College of Health Sciences. I'm so glad that you are joining us to watch this recording or attend the session live of our Pharmaceutical Sciences Bachelor's Degree within the Bouvet College of Health Sciences. I'm joined by two current students in the program and Professor Plant, um, who can share some insight about the program. Um, and then with the students and Professor Plant, we're happy to answer any questions about pharmaceutical sciences that you might have. So please utilize the Q&A feature. We'll also be sharing um, a curriculum book, which is really useful um, as you're looking at the course layout and how co-op works with our academic plan at Northeastern. I know that um, when you're looking at Northeastern and our co-op schedule, it might be a little bit different than some other schools you might be looking at. Um, so I find this to be really useful um, for prospective students. We'll also share um, our contact information for the Bouvet College um, of Health Sciences Enrollment Management Office. So if you do have any questions at any point throughout um, the admission cycle, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're more than happy to help answer any questions that you have. I know that as you do more research, different questions might come up. So please, again, don't hesitate to reach out at any point. We're more than happy to help answer any questions that um, do come up. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Professor Plant to talk a little bit about um, PharmSci. Hi everybody. So my name is Lee Plant. I'm a professor in pharmaceutical sciences here at the Bouvet College of Health Sciences in Northeastern. And I have been in this program for uh, a number of years and I'm the director of this, uh, this program, bachelor's degree of uh, science in pharmaceutical sciences. So this is one of the flagship programs at Northeastern University. Uh, we focus on pharmaceutical sciences, which is the study of drugs, pretty much all aspects of drug, how drugs are made, how drugs are designed, how drugs are delivered, what drugs do to you when you have a particular disease to try and help you feel better, and what your body then does to the drug to remove it when, when it's no longer needed. All of those different uh, aspects are focused on different points through the curriculum so that by the time you graduate, you understand everything there is to know about pharmaceutical sciences. In addition to that, we actually want to make you a pharmaceutical scientist. So we give you the best possible training we can in hands-on science. So starting as soon as year one, you get the opportunity to come into a faculty member's research lab and to do a real project with that professor. And in many cases, those projects last for three to four years. So by the time you're graduating, you have a genuine experience and most students have something tangible that they can take with them, their name on a research paper, the opportunity to have been to an international conference, et cetera. All of those things that will distinguish you from all of those other candidates that, uh, that graduate from their own schools and say that they have some research experience. We actually, will train you to be a real scientist. So in addition to, to those things as well, we have co-op opportunities for students in pharmaceutical sciences. Boston and Cambridge area is one of the best places in the world for you to have these opportunities. We have all of the major uh, biopharmaceutical companies here, many startups, different companies that focus on different aspects of, of healthcare, biomedicine and biotechnology and science. So I'm here to help answer any questions that you have. I'm really pleased today to have two extraordinary students from our program join us. Uh, and I'm, I'm pleased that you're here with us as well. Thank you. Great, thank you. That was a great overview. Um, Akia, if you could start first, introduce yourself and share a little bit about your experiences. Um, all right, um, my name is Akia. Um, I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, and I'm a second year um, in this program in the pharmaceutical sciences um, program. I'm also pre-med, so it's a lot. <laughs> but um, I've been well. This is my first my my first year on campus, but um, I've been involved in like a couple different um, organizations and clubs as well. As in addition to, of course, just um, my program, but um, a lot of uh, cultural, I'd say, um, clubs like um, the African Students Organization here at Northeastern and also 
the Black Students um, Association. So I'm the treasurer um, for the African Students Organization. And I'm also, as well, as a side club, I'm also in the studio, studio art club. So that's just um, something that's pretty nice. Um, I, um, since I've been here, I've, um, I've been taking a lot of um, science concentrated classes. I'd say that the BSPS, um, well, um, program is very um, direct and it's, it's very, well, I say concentrated. So there's not a lot of room for different electives. Um, however, I do believe all the courses that are a part of it are um, well suited for um, the degree to become a phar phar um, pharmaceutical scientist. So um, currently I'm actually in Professor Plant's lab and I'm working on a research project centered around, um, well, trying to use um, the two electrode voltage clamp techniques to, and apply them to another lab that I'm also in um, and apply it to the patch clamp techniques. There's very two different things, um, but to be able to, um, um, well, analyze and, and find out more information about, um, well, KR, KIR channels, so potassium channels in the body. So um, that's what I'm doing currently. I would say that the reason, or one of the reasons why I decided to choose this program was because um, won the co-op, <laughs> that was very beneficial and Northeastern in general for that. It was, um, I felt like it was a great opportunity. It, well, it is a great opportunity to be able to have experience in the work world um, while you're in school. So you don't have to wait till after to maybe do a post back or, or something like that. But um, while you're in school, you're able to have that experience. It looks great on your resume. And also it just, um, it gives you a different mindset, I'd say, on, um, on what to expect after you leave college. Um, I, um, another reason why I also chose the pharmaceutical science program is because I was always interested in drug development. Mm -hmm. So I, I wasn't entirely sure what I would pick. I was, um, I was kind of in between maybe a, a degree in chemistry or, or something along those lines. But once I kind of read the curriculum and, um, the expectations of what this program was, I decided that, oh, I think this would be best suited um, for my interest and in how um, around, of course, drug development, how drugs work in the body, um, how your body accepts them and, and, and communicates and, and all of those things. Those were very interesting to me. So if, if anyone has those sort of interests, I, I, <laughs> I think this would be the program for you. Um, so I think that's, yeah, that's a, kind of a lot about me, so. That's great, it's really helpful. I was gonna say, when you were talking about, when you briefly talked about what you're doing in the lab, we can get back to that. Um, it's amazing to hear your second year student, what you're doing already sounds so advanced. I'm obviously not a pharmaceutical scientist. Um, so it's, it's always really impressive to hear like the level of expertise you already have as a second year student. It's really um, Aziza, if you could um, introduce yourself and share a little bit um, about what you're doing in the program. Oh, sorry. I think it's kind of got a cut off. Um, so I'm a third year. My name is Aziza. Uh, I'm a third year. I spent my first year as an international student. Um, I had to pass some English classes and I took uh, very interesting courses like history and music. I realized like sociology, history, music, I realized that I'm, I love science and I was very happy to finally start my farm sci courses uh, last year. So it's my second year as a farm sci student. Uh, yeah, it was a wonderful experience because I joined Doctors Agar Lab and we are focused on ALS as amniotic lateral sclerosis, also known as uh, multiple sclerosis. 
um, not very well known disease, but many people know the patient of this disease is uh, Stephen Hawking. Fascinating case, not gonna lie. It's quite rare to see people to live that long with LS. Uh, and yes, I've been joined, I, I've been in this lab for about six months. I joined it last year and spent my entire summer there. And uh, throughout the summer, I've been conducting protein purification in Northeastern Burlington uh, campus uh, with Acta Systems, which is the industrialized, uh, you know, FPLC machine that, you know, other biotech companies are using. It's just, you know, we're using smaller sample. But it's fascinating to know that, you know, you do such little things, but in this lab, we were doing the protein purification in order to trust the drugs we are making for the ALS patients. So far, our drugs seem to be very promising. It provides very good data. It stabilizes the protein, the idea of it is fascinating. However, the results were um, unsuccessful when we treat them with our sick animals. So what right now we're trying to optimize our runs to make drug much more uh, absorbable, maybe more effective and less lethal. So that's what we're focused on right now. I've been working recently with a mouse, co mice colony. Very cute and chubby animals. I actually maybe want to go to veterinary. I'm like, I really love them. Um, and yeah, uh, I also think on starting my own project, we are going to be conducting with Dr. Agar on developing a surrogate biomarker. Uh, simply said, it's just a model of a mouse because what we realized, LS is quite rare, not, not really quite rare, but it's very hard to diagnose um, as well as many other misworded cause of protein diseases. And what we need in order to treat an animal, we really need to know when the animal gets sick, where this microstructural alterations in the neurons really start, which areas of the brain we should target. Because right now it seems like we're all going blindly. We just want to get physical effects for paralysis to you know kind of reverse and people can return back to have a normal motor function. They can move, they can breathe. But we really don't know what is happening in the brain. And that's what was my idea. Let's go to the core of it. And since Dr. Ferris here in North Eastern's lab, they have an MRI machine in their um, in downstairs a building of it um, underground. So we can bring our rats now because it seems like the mouse wouldn't fit in the MRI machine. So we will be getting rats with ALS and nice. we'll try to develop the surrogate biomarker model, but it will take maybe in a year or so. So uh, it's not a fast, uh, quite experience. I also, aside of the research, being quite active in the clubs, I became a founder and a president of Undergraduate Biomedical Researchers Club mm -hmm. at Northeastern. We are trying to help students who are on a track of pre-med or you know, have any other interest in the science to get on hands-on research experience or just to do fun experiments like, um, you know, culturing bacteria and very fun bacteria like, you know, bacillus, staphylococcus, things that you can find on your desk and then see what's happening in your agar plate. It's very fascinating. I love culturing and I do have some uh, non-pathogenic, obviously, cultures that I have, at, even at my home, I have my own small lab studio there. So it's a really good experience and Northeastern students really enjoy it. It's also a platform where you get connected to other people of science. You mm -hmm. socialize and make connections because later in the future, they're gonna be quite helpful for you. So lately, I think last week I stepped down of my presidential position because I, when you get in the lab and you start research, it takes your whole time. And I felt really guilty for neglecting my work as a president. So I stepped down. Now I'm just research lead advisor. So I conduct workshops and help students if they have any questions, if I can answer them. I'm not really an expert in science, but I've been doing a little things. Uh, yeah. you, sound, you sound very involved in research. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask Professor Plant, um, because both of you have talked a little bit about research, and it's clear that the, you know, by your third year in the program, you're doing quite quite a bit. You sound, as you said, quite the expert. Professor Plant, do you expect students to come in 
with research experience, with any specific skills? Um, what do they need to, to start the program? The only thing they need is enthusiasm. You do not need to have any pre-existing research experience. You need to have the notion that you'd at least like to try it and that you'd like to give it a go. Uh, some of our students come in with uh, some experience because they have been to a particular type of uh, high school or they've had a particular internship, for example. Um, but that's really not required. We teach you everything that we need you to know and we want you to know. That's great. Akwia, did you come up with any experience and how was how did you find the research lab that you were working Yeah, I had actually um, wanted to make a comment on that. Um, <clears throat> I feel like, well, I personally, I had a bit of experience, but not enough to like to just start or begin a lab and just begin any sort of work. So um, since I've um, started um, work in um, Dr. Plant's lab, I've actually been <laughs> equipping <clears throat> some of those skills, some of those lab skills. So um, there are um, other lab assistants who are there who will like uh, guide you um, actually in like different steps, not necessarily um, telling you exactly what to do, but like, like holding your hand. So um, whatever questions you may have about, oh, how do I do this? They can answer those and they're usually there. But at the same time, they give you some sort of independence. So um, you are uh, um, developing your own skills. So I'd say that it's through this program that I've been able to learn a lot of lab skills. And it's um, actually great that it's not required before you come in. So when you, um, it's rather like, this is the place for you to, you know, equip those skills. So when you go out, um, people um, will, um, well, they might have expectations of you to be able to do th these sort of things and you can do them, so. Yeah, that's how my experience has been. That's great. Aziza, do you have anything to add on that? Um, I would say it's similar to what Akoya is saying. I all of my experience in biomedical field, like as a researcher, came from this program. I did have a small experience in seismology with earthquakes because um, my grandma is a geophysicist and she has Parkinson's disease. That's why I'm so fascinated with misfolded protein cause diseases. And uh, I spent my time with her, taking care of her. And at the same time, I was doing research with her. Can't say that earthquakes are fascinating, <laughs> it's just earthquakes, but I realized I liked what she was doing, but I want to go more into the biomedical field. And everything what I'm doing right now, I learned literally last year. That's amazing. I, you would have no idea listening to you talk. <laughs> you'd stop. I thought you'd be like, I went to a special high school where you did research. So it's, it's amazing the skills that you gain in the program. Um, Lee, one of the questions I get asked frequently is what is the difference between the farm side program and the farm D program? If you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's a great question and it's an important distinction. So there, there is significant overlap and, and sometimes that can cause a little bit of confusion. Uh, both the farm D degree where you are becoming a pharmacist and pharmaceutical science degree where you're becoming a pharmaceutical scientist uh, have a lot of the same core disciplines. And in fact, students are sometimes even in, in the same class. But the end result is the same, is, uh, is, is where the difference comes in. So uh, the PharmD degree trains you to be a pharmacist. These are people who, uh, who typically have uh, a clinical aspect to their work. Uh, they might be working in a hospital with patients and a team of other healthcare providers. They might be working at a pharmacy, a, lo a local pharmacy, like a CVS or a Walgreens to provide drugs to patients that have prescriptions. Uh, whereas a pharmaceutical scientist is essentially a, a scientist who's working either in an academic lab or uh, an industry lab, a biopharma lab, uh, to, try to, uh, to try to solve problems, ask questions, develop new drugs and develop new treatment strategies. The pharmacist would then be the person that interacts with the community and the patients and the other healthcare providers to implement some of those drugs and strategies. Perfect. 
Um, it sounds like it's fairly, Aziza, you came in through another program too. So it sounds like um, it's fairly easy to, to change paths if you're in a different program and you realize that um, farm size where you wanna be. That, that happens all the time. We have students transferring from farm D into farm Sci because that's where their interest truly is. They want to have more research experience. And we touched on this a little bit, but um, where the degree can take you. So at Quia, it sounds like you're interested in going on to medical school. So can you talk a little bit about um, why you chose farm Sci um, for the pre-med pathway? Um. I, um, well, I, I don't, I wouldn't say that I was completely sure about what I wanted to do when I um, came in or when I started undergrad, um, but um, I always knew that I was very interested in the way, like I'm saying, the way the body works and also how drugs affected um, the body and the reason why I decided to um, continue to go on this pre-med track was because I would like the mix be, um, of both of those things, both research and also dealing with patients and helping others. So, I mean, of course you're helping others in, um, through research in a lot of different various ways, but um, I also like the hands-on um, aspect of that. So I think that's what really drove um, my decision to choose um, pre-med. Um, I actually, um, speaking of PharmD, I was in between that and PharmSci. And I knew that, I mean, from what I've seen, from what I've seen lab, um, well, pharmacy techs do, I wasn't as interested in the clinical side of pharmacy, um, prescribing drugs. There's a lot of other things to a pharmacy, but then, um, especially that um, I, I didn't see my interest there at all. I didn't see any passion there. And therefore I was, um, I came to the conclusion that maybe doing the six year, um, you know, starting the six year program to become a pharmacist isn't really what I would want to do. I would want to have more experience like um, Professor Plant was saying in research. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to like what the future brings. I, I'm not exactly sure um, what I, what I still want to do, but um, I, I definitely know that it is like um, Aziza was saying in the biomedical field, concerning medicine, concerning research, whether it's a combination of those or I start to or I drift off to one. I'm not sure yet, but um, I definitely didn't want to limit my opportunities, so. No, that's great. And I, I think having having all those doors open for you is important. Um, and PharmSci can definitely take you in, in many directions and you'll be very well prepared. Um, and I know Aziza, you had said that you were interested potentially in becoming medical researcher. So are you thinking you're interested potentially in a, a graduate degree? Yeah, I'm possibly thinking about uh, spending one more year here at Northeastern and receive master's degree in pharmaceutical sciences or toxicology. Uh, when I was conducting MTT assays, is it cytotoxicity assays, when you see how uh, toxic your drug is, I was fascinated to see how human, you know, cancer cells, usually that's on what we will be conducting our drugs on. Uh, it's, uh, have two cells, it's stomach cancer cells. And fascinating to see how they would react. And I decided possibly I will do one more year here at Northeastern. They have a program. If you spend one more year here and take master degree classes, I would receive a master's degree. Hopefully it would turn out as it is. So yeah, I I want to become a medical researcher, but medical school kind of scares me off with the amount of requirements it wants from you. And it's a very high competition. There is so many students with a very, very high credentials. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to put it as a set point because that would be very hard to achieve, but hopefully we will be able to. I'm very interested in a clinical research setting because that's where you see 
the mass of the research to take its step forward and up. Because I think like right now, what we're doing is more of a sketching, whereas when you go into clinical research, it's more of you're finishing up the product mm. and you see the results. So yeah. Interesting. Hopefully. So you're finding out what type of research you like doing during the program, which is also- Yeah, good. I think I'm gonna stay on a misfolded protein cost, like ALS, Parkinson, prions. <laughs> Yeah. Wonderful. And, and Lee, my next question for you is going to be, can you talk a little bit about the plus one programs and the, the master's degrees that um, we offer here? So Aziza, it was a perfect lead in. Mm, absolutely. We have uh, several master's degrees that students from outside of the university come in and those master's degrees are two year programs. Uh, but if you're already in pharmaceutical sciences, then we have something that we call the plus one program where through the last part of your degree, you have space to take graduate student classes and double count those classes towards both your pharmaceutical sciences bachelor's degree, the BSPS, and the master's degree. So this strategy helps make the master's degree just one additional year staying on uh, Northeastern. So it turns your degree program in from uh, four years to five years, but you graduate with a, with a master's degree. We have a couple of different tracks that you can take depending on your interest. Some people are more interested in medicinal chemistry, which is the study of uh, how you design uh, different drug molecules. Some people are more interested in how drugs are delivered and pharmaceutics, so how drugs are formulated and how you get drugs to particular parts of the body for different types of disease. And some people are more interested in pharmacology, which is how the drug will work what it's doing inside the body. And then the toxicity of that drug is something that Aziza mentioned also. So these are great options. And we have, uh, we have wonderful students that, that, that take advantage of this every year. That's great. Thank you so much. I just wanted to add on to um, what Akia was talking about with uh, pre-med. Um, to If you're interested in going on to medical school, we do have a really strong pre-health advising office within Northeastern. And any student at Northeastern is able to take advantage of the services they provide with um, MCAT prep, um, making sure your committee letters are where they're supposed to be and the timeline um, and the requirements. But you, you really can be almost any major as long as you're meeting the um, prerequisite coursework um, to apply to medical school. Obviously, the sciences are where most students are applying from because those are their required courses and they fit really well into the curriculum. Um, so there is a pre-med pathway within the PharmSci program where you can seamlessly take the prerequisite coursework within the major itself. You're not you know, um, having to do a lot of extra work to get the prerequisites in within this major itself, which is why um, it's a nice pathway if you are interested in PharmSci and potentially going on to um, medical school. And like Lee was saying in the beginning, it really positions you in a unique way. You're taking, um, you know, a lot of students will take um, health science or pre-med uh, biology as um, the major that they're interested in for uh, med school, but farm size a little bit um, more unique. There's not as many students who have farm size, a bachelor's degree and are applying to medical school. So the skills that you're developing as a farm size student are really um, different than what some of your competitors um, it, applying in, um, like Aziza was saying, you know, medical schools are really competitive to apply in, but by having PharmSci as a degree, you're really positioning yourself very competitively. Um, and our students in general from Northeastern do really well um, in the med school application process. Um, our med school acceptance rates about double the national average in general. Um, and then our students in PharmSci have so much research experience behind them, which is something that medical schools are, are really looking at um, as something that their applicants have. So our farm size students definitely have that in, in spades. Um, we talked a bit about research um, and, and co-op, but I was wondering, um, Lee, if you could talk a little bit about how students are, um, how students get into research, or are they like assigned to research labs? Um, do you kind of expose them to different things? And then if we could talk a little bit about what co-op is, because we've, we've mentioned that several times, but um, we actually haven't talked about what co-op actually is. Right, so with, with respect to, to research, uh, we have a program that's typically run in the spring of the first year, the freshman year, and the program's called Introduction to Health Science Research. And the purpose of that program is to bring different faculty members from Northeastern 
in to meet with the students and have a discussion about the faculty members work. And then it's depending on how many students and how many faculty members are, there are, it can be a competitive process some, some years, yes, some years less so, but essentially the students sort of apply to those faculty member labs to say, I'm really interested in what you do. Uh, by, by the virtue of the fact that the faculty member came to the program, they, they have a slot available for one or two students. And then uh, we, we pair people up that way. So as much as possible, we try to put students with faculty members who has work uh, working projects that they're interested in. And typically these are real projects, as I mentioned, uh, that's where the students will, uh, over the course of several years, get genuine experience and participate with their own hands in driving that project forward. So another area where people get significant amount of research experience is the co-op, so cooperative education uh, Northeast. And so this is a, a real opportunity to go out to work in, uh, in a company or an industry setting Again, these are competitive places. Students apply for these. And the program that uh, we have, uh, the, the curriculum that students are applying now will come into, there is a six month co-op that they will have. Uh, and that, that co-op starts in the summer of the second year and runs through the, the whole of the fall of the third year. So it's six months long. Uh, so these are competitive. You can choose something that is to your liking and then apply to it. So you might want to do something in the biopharmaceutical industry in a big company like Pfizer or Moderna. If you want to put more of a pre-med track, you may choose to make this more of a clinical experience. You can basically do whatever it is you want to do. We have students who are definitely interested more in research and they want to go on to graduate school. So they take this opportunity to do more lab work. And that doesn't have to be in the same lab as the research mentor that you're working with primarily. So we have students that have gone internationally to work. Uh, for example, we had a student a few years ago went to work uh, cancer biology lab in Milan, Italy. Had a great experience there, came back uh, having learned some really amazing new techniques that were not available with, with, uh, with research at Northeastern. So brought those back to the lab and started using them here and building up a new research program. So this is really beneficial to everybody. As a professor, I really, really like co-op. So our research students do very, very well in our labs. Uh, they, they are very talented. We train them the best way that we can. But once they go out into co-op and the, the stakes are a little bit higher, so there you're, you're getting paid, you're, you have um, like work obligations as a true professional, uh, you can even get fired if you if you really uh, mess up badly enough. But when the students then come back to the lab after co-op, everything is completely changed. They have developed this entirely new skill set, this entirely new level of uh, work ethic, time management, uh, professionalism, and uh, the the difference is night and day. So then, by the time those students are ready to go out into the workforce, whether it's directly after their bachelor's degree or after a master's degree or whatever graduate program they want to get into, clinical or research-based, uh, they are head and shoulders above students from other universities, in, in my opinion. And I've, I've worked with students from several different universities in Ivy League and uh, non-Ivy non League in the United States. So Northeastern students do, do the best. That's great. Yeah, I, I would say that some of the, aside from like the technical skills inside the different fields that our students are studying, the, the soft skills, like the communication skills and time management, like you were saying, it's just the only way you can gain those skills is by practicing. So it's a really amazing opportunity for those students to, to gain skills. And then for interviewing and the confidence our students have after co-op too, it's, it's amazing and incredible to see. So walking into your first, you know, graduate, postgraduate job interview or med school interview as you said, Akia, you're going to be ready to go. You'll be able to sell yourself and talk about your experiences in a way that most college graduates have not had the opportunity to do yet. So yeah, the, the, the confidence and the, the fact that you actually really have already done this before and you, you, you've been successful is, is, uh, is really, really important. Yeah. You can't teach that in the classroom. No, you can't. Yeah, it's great. Um, Lee and I could probably talk about co-op all day. <laughs> um, 
Um, so we just have a few minutes left. So um, Aziza and Ekbi, I wanted to ask you guys as you're thinking about the rest of your time at Northeastern and, and what you're looking forward to, what's something that you're really excited about um, for the rest of your time? And Ekbi, I know this is your, your first year on campus, so there's probably a lot that you're really excited and, and looking forward to. Um, it could be a few things if, if there's more than one. Um... Of course, co-op. I am excited about that. Um, I am also, like he said, I'm excited um, about just exploring Boston as well. Like, it's it's a beautiful city. There's a lot to do. I'd say that if you also just wanted to come to, you know, Northeastern for a change of environment, I feel like there's. Um, there's there's um a lot that well there's a culture that you know you tend to learn about and um I mean I I can only speak for how long I've been here which isn't that long but so far it's been really amazing and I'd say that there's also a really great community here at Northeastern um every single day I see that they try and um uh have different either events or um, panels, webinars, meetings, and things for people to feel included and um, to also give you as many opportunities and options um, as possible. So I feel like uh, I am looking forward to a lot more this semester and um, this year. I also, um, the co-op, uh, at least with the pharmaceutical science program, we have the opportunity to do two, even though um, for some programs, even in the period of a four year um, degree, it's you can only usually do one co-op. So we usually have one, I don't know if it's the same for this year, but uh, uh, one in the summer of our second year and then the spring of our third year in the farm side program. So I there's a lot of opportunities. And of course, I'm very excited to um, start all these, these journeys, you know, so. That's great. Aziza, what are you looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to conduct this research <laughs> in the lab. I'm, I'm a lab rat. I, 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 I've, Yes, I haven't been much on campus activities, so I'm look. I'm very, very uh, looking forward to what we're going to be doing with, you know, um, our chemicals and how we're going to optimize our runs to make them better working. Uh, with COVID, not much <laughs> to expect, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. All obviously, co-op. I'm still a bit of shocked that COP is going to start soon, clearly this summer. So quite excited about that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, students are always really excited about COP and your, your enthusiasm for research definitely comes through. So I think that's, that's wonderful. Um, Lee, as we wrap up, um, is there any closing words, you have any piece of advice for students who are interested in pursuing PharmSci? Um, yeah, I'd yeah. say follow your gut, uh, mm -hmm. whatever you think you're interested in, try out, um, don't be afraid to also not like something as well. Um, we have all these opportunities for a reason. We might be in a research or, or lab rotation and you, I mean, it turns out you don't really like the work you're doing in the lab, and I've learned that that's okay. Um, but one thing that is great, good to have, um, like uh, Professor Plant has said, is enthusiasm. Like a th and also like Aziza, have a, a lot of enthusiasm and um, in the attitude to learn and um, and you know just adapt and. Uh, to you know, equip all these different skills. So it's all about your attitude and how you're looking at it, your perspective of the different experiences that you have. So always keep an open mind and you know a positive attitude, and and it'll take you a long way. Yeah. I, I, yeah. 
I think that's very wise and mature. Yeah, I think all of the experiences are just different pieces of information for you, whether it is something that you are really passionate and excited about, or if it's steering you in a different direction, it's just, it's just useful information as you're getting to know what you like and what you don't like. Yeah, I think that's that's absolutely correct. I mean, it's also my best advice is to try to follow your your passion and your interests, but be open to new experiences too. There's a lot to learn out there and we nobody knows everything. So that's true. Well, thank you all so much for your time. It was lovely chatting with all of you. Um, again, please don't hesitate to reach out to um, me if you have any questions. I will um, put my email in the chat and I hope everyone has a great rest of your afternoon.